Hey YouTube, welcome to Thing A Day. Patrick here. Um, so lately, I've been playing a lot of Jetpack Joyride, and it kind of got me wondering: Can you really use a machine gun for a jetpack? First, in order to figure out if a machine gun is going to be a good um, method of propulsion, we need to find the thrust to weight ratio, which is pretty straightforward. It's the thrust versus the weight of the uh, machine gun. So, if your thrust to weight ratio is less than one, it cannot cannot push itself off of its own force. So the equation for thrust looks kind of like this. The dm dt is the change of the mass of the object. So in this case, it's going to be a change in the mass of our machine gun, which will be the mass lost because of bullets being shot. Um, the v is going to be the same as our muzzle velocity of a bullet. Now it is time for some math. I decided to start off with a pretty big gun, mostly because I'm trying to find something that's going to get me off the ground, so I'm not going to start with anything small. I started off with the Dillon Arrow M134 machine gun, um, also kind of looked at as your run-of-the-mill minigun. Alright, let's get out what we know about this gun. It weighs a little over 45 pounds, has a muzzle velocity of 838.2 meters per second, each bullet weighs about 0 0.03 kilograms, and it shoots 50 rounds per second. Now we can plug all this in and figure out the thrust. We gotta find the DMDT, which is the bullet mass times the number of bullets fired per second, which gives us 1.37 kilograms per second being lost. Now we just plug in chug. 1.37 times our muzzle velocity of 838.2 meters per second gives us 1148.3 newtons of force which turns into roughly 258 pounds of force by this gun. Now that means that this gun is able to lift itself because if you were to find the thrust to weight ratio it comes out to about 25 and a half. And now if you do a little extra math you can find that this gun can lift itself in addition to an extra 1,100 pounds. Now the next gun um, is even bigger. You really can't talk about big guns without mentioning the GAU. It's the gun on the A-10 Thunderbolt II. Um, used in the American Air Force it's for strafing runs, this gun can destroy just about anything. Okay, so this gun weighs a little over 4,000 pounds with the feed system, drum, and full ammo. We're not going to cheat and just say the gun itself because that is a lot less. Each round weighs 0.69 kilograms, which is a whopping one and a half pounds, which is a lot for a bullet. It shoots roughly 65 bullets per second and has a muzzle velocity of 1,070 meters per second. So, we just plug and chug again. Again, we're going to start off by finding our DM over DT, which turns out to be a little less than 45 kilograms per second. Then we're going to plug into the thrust equation, multiplying by the muzzle velocity, and giving us a little less than 48,000 newtons, which turns into almost 11,000 pounds of force. That means that the thrust to weight ratio, if you were to look, is about 26.3, which is huge and um, that also means that this gun can lift itself with the feed system the drum and everything can lift itself and an extra 6,000 pounds which is ridiculous of course whenever you're talking about big stuff the Russians are usually at the top of the list enter the Gryazev Shipanov GSH 630 this gun is used for similar purposes as the GAU 8 for ground runs and strafing However, this is so powerful that it will actually slow the plane down when fired and causes ridiculous amounts of collateral damage. It will break apart your plane between um, round fragments and just the vibrations and rattling of the gun itself will start to break apart your plane. So it can't be shot for very long. All right, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that. If you have something interesting you think it'd be cool for me to talk about, leave a comment. Uh, 
and I will see you guys next time.